Good afternoon, St. Mary Magdalene. My, my name is Miguel Soto. I'm the other seminarian that's been assigned to you guys this summer. So between Miguel Solis and myself, God willing, we will be doing a two-part series on formation. And so today we're going to be talking about specifically the Nazareth House. For those of you that do not know, Bishop Olmsted has discerned and given us the grace to build a seminary here in the Diocese of Phoenix. It's called Nazareth House Seminary. It's been built, I believe, around two years ago. And that's currently located in front of St. Gregory's Catholic Church, which is at 19th Avenue in Osborne. The seminary itself used to be a convent for some nuns, but they left, and St. Gregory's had the property, and by the grace of God, Bishop was praying for a house of formation here at home, and St. Gregory's offered the place and sold it to Bishop. And by the grace of God, now we have had two seminary classes come and go through that house. And this August, we will start the third seminary class that will be entering into there. So I'm just going to talk about what Nazareth House is and how it looks like. So when we talk about priestly formation, how seminarians are formed, there are four dimensions and there are also four phases. So I have written here that four phases in seminary formation. You have propedeutic, it's a five dollar word right there, discipleship, confirmation, and synthesis. I'm going to talk today about propedeutic formation. Propedeutic formation is what the Nazareth House specializes in. So I'm not going to worry about discipleship or confirmation today because those are later stages of formation. So, the church asks that those who enter into seminary formation, in order to be a good priest, you need to have a solid base in your formation. You need to be the man that God has called you to be before you can be a priest. So think of it as an architectural structure. Before I can have this huge skyscraper, if I do not have a solid basis here to support this building will it'll fall down. And so Nazareth House specializes in propedeutic formation. Propedeutic means preparatory or before formation. Think of it kind of as like the pre-K of seminary, though not really because we're not kindergartners or pre-kindergartners. But we're not taking any philosophy classes, like in discipleship, and we're not taking any theology classes either, as in conformity. Because discipleship is you starting to think like Christ, which is why we take philosophy, and conformation, confirmation is you conforming more into the person of Christ. You dying to yourself little by little and becoming more Christ. Because as we know, the priest acts in persona Christi, in the person of Christ. He's becoming more and more like Christ, so that when he is ordained a priest in synthesis, he is Christ to the people. He is in that person of Christ. So Nazareth House specializes in preparatory formation. We have a two-year program that consists of men here in the diocese, homegrown. We'll go to Nazareth House for two years, and after those two years, they'll be sent to St. John Vianney Theological Seminary in Denver, Colorado, where they can continue their formation in discipleship and confirmation. Now, the program at Nazareth House consists of getting an associate's degree. We currently go to Phoenix College, because it's a college that's close by to the house. But it's not just us taking classes. Specifically, seminary formation has four dimensions, as I stated. These are the four phases. The four dimensions are intellectual, which is your studies, so forming the intellect. You also have human, because God has called human beings. He's not calling robots. Your priest has feelings, thoughts. He is a human person, so he needs to be formed in this human aspect. Spiritual, and then lastly, pastoral.
And so these are called the four dimensions of priestly formation because all of these are connected one another. They're not separate. So I need to study, yes. Study, no, what I need to know. Human, how do I interact with other people? How do I interact with my brother seminarians so that when I become a priest, I know how to interact with my brother priest and how to interact with the people? Because as I stated before, your priest is not a robot. He's a human being. He needs to know himself, preparing himself to be the man that God has called him to be. Spiritual, we go and we learn more about Christ's work in our lives, having a spiritual director and focusing on our spiritual life, we get aspects of this. It's not full immersion into these two, in these two uh, phases. We still get hints of it. You need to build the phases first before you build the rest of the skyscraper. So we still work and have this, but it's not as deep yet. And then pastoral. Us going out and serving the people of God. Currently I am doing some aspects of pastoral formation with you guys right now with this video. But Nazareth House, specifically when it comes to pastoral, the seminarians will go and serve other ministries and other different groups in the diocese. Previously we used to go to seminary in the Pontifical College Josephina, and when guys came back they didn't really know the diocese as well, and so they had to learn a lot about the diocese already after the fact that they're ordained, whereas now we're taking charge of it and we're going to have these guys in-house form and know the people and you guys will also get to know them better. So the way that Nazareth House works, I'm just going to go through the schedule. Starting off on Monday, on Monday, Monday through Saturday, the mornings look the same. The men wake up, around 5.30 in the morning, and we go down to have Holy Hour and morning prayer together, prayer of the church, and then we have Mass. And it's so important to have this in the morning because it allows us to start off with Christ. If we do not start off with Christ, it doesn't matter if you have good grades, if you're a great guy, if you know how to serve with other people, if you don't have that connection with Jesus Christ, if you don't have that relationship, it's all for naught. So in the mornings, we have Holy Hour, Lauds, Mass, every morning. Then we have our breakfast time. It's not in community. We end up eating together in community after Mass. And afterwards, we go to class. Because of COVID, most of our classes have been in person, but currently in August, the guys will be going in person to Phoenix College. And it's such a great witness, and also the guys will also be able to experience that little bit of challenge and often some persecution when someone says, you guys are doing what? You're studying to be priest? What is that? And so it also serves as a manner of evangelization to those people in the secular colleges. The day starts to look pretty, pretty normal, whereas lunch is around 12 o'clock, and afterwards, we don't have our next communal gathering until the evening, which is around 5.30, where we have Vespers, and then dinner. And so an aspect of human formation that we have for the guys at Nazareth House is they cook. We have a schedule, and guys will cook. It's your turn to cook today, and so they'll cook a meal because we need to know how to cook our food, too. It's a part of being human. We need to eat to survive. So we learn how to cook and just serve other guys. And then afterwards is when our nights start to look different. So all of that is every day. But the evenings, Monday through the rest of the day, is different. So on Mondays, we have formation nights. So someone will come over to the Nazareth house and give us a talk on how to be formed in certain ways. A priest will come, a religious sister will come, or we'll have someone in charge of different programs for example, we'll have Paul Mulligan from Catholic Charities come and give us a formational talk on how to serve the people, what is it like to be at Catholic Charities and being this door of evangelization to many people. Tuesdays, guest nights, we have people come over, day-to-day -day people, come and see the seminary and they'll eat with us. Wednesdays, fraternity nights. So another aspect of human formation is us getting to know our brothers and so that night, 
a guy will be in charge of doing a group activity, we'll play a board game, we'll all go out. Because we need to learn to live together as a community because it mimics how sometimes when we're at churches, at other parishes, we'll be living with another priest. How do we get along with this other guy? Because he's my brother in Christ. How am I going to live with him? Knowing his little gimmicks, knowing how my little gimmicks and learning to live with them. And so Fraternity Tonight builds that. I learn to love my brother as he is. Thursday is deep clean nights. So we'll do a deep clean of the kitchen. We clean every dinner, but to go on a full deep as a house, we have these minor interactions where it's just filled with joy, us serving one another and serving the house in this way. Then we have Fridays as a free, freer night. You're not going out anywhere, but the guys will usually hang out together. And Saturdays are our work day. Saturdays will go out to an apostolate, to a different charity organization, or a different, uh, mi different ministry and go and serve them on Saturday mornings. So we'll call these work days. And then Sundays are our free days after we serve the people. We go to Sacred Heart Catholic Church over on 12th Street and Buckeye, which is Father Paul Sullivan's home parish, and the people and get to know us. Pastoral and human, they, we see them, they know us, and they not, they're not just like, oh, these are just guys here on a wall. No, I know that guy. I've seen him at Mass. I've had breakfast with him at the parish. And so we get to know a little bit more about parish life as well. And so if you guys have this certain mentality of what Nazareth House is, I'm here to just clear the waters out for you to help you guys to understand what is it that we do? We focus on pro formation. Our men are being prepared so that they can go over to St. John Vianney and continue on to the next phases of priestly formation. Well, I hope you guys have a blessed Friday, and God bless you guys.